I'm Mary Chifo, and I just graduated from Juilliard for drama. I think a huge uh, turning point for me in my relationship with Shakespeare was actually I was in uh, seventh grade going into eighth grade, and I went to uh, Will Gear's Theatricum Botanicum camp in uh, Los Angeles, and I played Cleopatra. And uh, I cut my hair so that I had the bangs, and uh, my mom had this beautiful... Um, Indian dress we had gotten in Little India, and I wore it, and I just felt so powerful. And being able to use my voice um, to that extent and really um, change my scene partner through the words I was relaying to them was thrilling. And to be in an outdoor space, which is was so magical, and I think just from that point on, I was addicted to the magic of it. <laughs> It's amazing. I will say that Shakespeare, ever since my Cleopatra experience, has really been um, has really uh, been a lot of. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. It leaves me speechless. Apparently, um, I I feel that it's. They've been markers. All the Shakespeare roles that I've tackled uh, have just marked uh, turning points in my life. For example, um, in school recently at at, at Juilliard, uh, in my second year, I played uh, Lear. And that was such a tremendous challenge that was insurmountable, but it humbled me and really allowed me to understand a lot of personal demons that I, I just made me grow so much. And then uh, earlier this year, we did this all-female um, Scottish play and um, to tackle a character that is so close to this dark side and really falls into it was also a great exploration for me and has made me very excited to then tackle Iago, who has really surrendered to that side of himself. And uh, I think as someone who likes, I like to think of myself as a kind, happy person, a uh, loving person, to really explore this darker side um, is just, it's invaluable. and. These Shakespeare characters, they go there. They really do. <laughs> I think probably the most valuable <laughs> value <laughs> that uh, a Shakespearean actor has is, is their love of words. I think um, you really, and not just the meaning of the words, but how the words sound. In fact, I think just the synthesis of how, what the meaning, how the meaning is relayed through the sound of the word. It's certainly what uh, gets me going, is when I can really relay what I'm saying through the consonants or the vowels or the combination of the two. I'm gonna be doing uh, Iago's first soliloquy to the audience, um, just beginning to understand what's going on there. <laughs> Thus do I ever make my fool my purse. For I, mine own gain knowledge should profane if I would time expend with such a snipe but for my sport and profit. I hate the more, and it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he's done my office. I know not if it be true, Yet I, for mere suspicion in that kind, will do as if for surety. He holds me well. The better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let me see now. To get his place and plume up my will in double knavery. How? How? Let's see. After some time, to abuse Othello's ear that he is too familiar with his wife. He hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected, framed to make women false. The more is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so. 
and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have it. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. Thank you.